Hello, welcome back to the final podcast of this series. Thank you for coming here and listening to her story and what she has been through and also what she has become today. It is very hard for a lot of people to understand domestic violence until you actually become in that person's shoes. So sit back and relax in here to hear the rest of this person's story. Um, also follow us on social media so you'll be able to see any updates about anything that's happening with us. If you're a person who wants to be a part of the Hear Our Voices um, podcast or give out resources for Spanish or English, we would love to have you on a board. If you're a person who just want to give out resources, you could tell us about that. If you're a person who just wants to tell your story, we could be about that. So pick anyone what works for you and we'd love to have you on or have resources for our people. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And thank you. And see you next True. And also, because this happened literally in, I want to say in Harlem or the Bronx, just, I want to say a week or two ago. And it was in a, I want to say it was in an extra building or something like that. It was in a building. And the abuser, a neighbor was helping somebody. They intervened. And then the person who got to intervene got hurt. If it's a violent situation like that, I'm just saying, if they're going to they go and bring out guns or something like that, just call the cops. I'm just saying. Instead of putting yourself and your family in jeopardy, because you don't know what people have in their homes, if they have a, well, everybody have a knife in the house, but you don't know if they have guns nowadays, it's getting out of control. Especially in New York City, if you don't know, our crime rate is is off, it was, it was good in Corona, and, and it's, it's kind of yeah. skyrocketing. I don't know if being in the house too long and not getting fresh air for a while made people's head go kind of out there, but the rate for domestic violence is 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 out of control. To be honest, a lot of it is not reported. You might say, "Oh, so look at the numbers." It might be going. A lot of the times, just like sexual abuse, they're not reported, and if they're reported, they're oh, reported yeah. the So just be mindful if you want to help. Violence somebody. in general, it's not reported correctly, right? Or appropriately, it's not. But you know, it's funny that you said these things about. I was in the subway one day. I think it was like three years ago. It's really difficult, though, but you need to definitely think about yourself first. Yeah. Um, and then, so I think it was like, it was winter time. It was still uh, like early in the evening, but yeah. it was dark. And and I, I don't know what I thought that like, this girl was being raped. Um, I don't know if, you know, maybe they were just arguing or anything with the boyfriend, but she didn't feel like, you know, she was not comfortable at all. She was pushing the guy away. She was screaming. So, and it was like in the corner, you know, some of those really tiny streets. Yeah. And then I just happened to walk there for me because it was a shortcut to go to the, the, the subway. Okay. And then from far, I start screaming, leave alone, leave alone. So, and I'm, I'm running toward the boy, but. Oh my gosh. <laughs> young guy. I, I didn't know, like, he, he could have done something crazy to me and to the girl too, right? Yeah. I just, I, that's my advocacy hat and motherhood or whatever you want. Right. Hat that I was wearing. Or like, you know, people, somebody who doesn't like injustice or hate violence. I just, I totally forget about myself. <laughs> I, I have my two kids. I'm like, I got to think about, it's, I'm a single mom. So I got to think about it. If something happens to me, God forbid. You, you, you're right. That's what, that's, what I'm, that's what I came back and give, give that example just to say. In a situation like this, don't do like I did because it's not responsible. Right. Because you know, I, my life, I could have put my life in danger right there. And I'm, you know, I'm grateful. Thank God that you know the young boy just he, he walked away. Right. The young boy wa- walked away, and then when I got closer to the young girl, and I was just like, okay, I'm gonna call the police. And then you know, but I knew there were police station not too far, so I took her to that police station. Right. And I couldn't stay too long because, you know, I had to go. I'm like, you're a single mom. I had to go get my kids. And no one could do that. Um, at least she was at the, at, the, you know, at the police station and then she was safe. But um, as I was thinking about it, like riding the subway, I'm like, what, what just happened? Because he was so quick. He happened so quickly. I didn't even realize. And I'm like, oh, my God, I did that. At the end, I was really glad because the girl was safe and then, you know, um, but it, it's really a dangerous thing to say, just to do. Like like you said, you know, that neighbor just wanted to come and say, call the police from your house. Right. Say, I think what's happening next door, you know, it's, it's ugly and, you know, just come here and, and do something. 
you know, call the police, call the authorities to come and do what they have to do. Don't try to go as a savior and do what you have to do, especially like me, like, it was a young boy. The boy was strong. Exactly. I mean, he was tall. Exactly. Tell, like, that's why the story said, what just happened? I was like, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Because that boy will have just slap you and then you will have, you know, I don't know. Right. Oh, well, I don't know but um, yeah, so we really have to be careful. Like we, you know, as like, you know, whatever, if you see things that you don't like to see and that you hate, you want, you know, you want to make things right. But, Take a second just to, you know, to think about, is there a better way to do it? Right. And to put my life in danger. Yeah. It's so, it's... it's because just, violence is everywhere now all the time. And now is. people, what they do, people just, people just look, people just observe. Have you seen this? All some, those videos on social media? Yeah. Like somebody being, you know, being aggressed, somebody's aggressing someone or things. People just take up, they take up their phone. And they start recording. They live. Like, they, yeah. they think they, I don't know, they report a special reporter. I don't know what they do, but it, it's really sad. Like, you know, you, you could have taken your phone before 911. Don't, don't stand there and take some pictures or you, you're taking that video for what? You, you're going live on social media for what? Yeah. I yeah. think sometimes the videos, depending what it is, if you're just watching and not getting help or if, it could be two, different scenarios. If Sometimes the cops or stuff around, you have to make sure, you know, take a video just in case something happened. Yeah, they need it probably for things. But most times on nowadays, I feel like, think when I, you're right, I understand that. But if you have like 20 people standing there and all yeah. of them just recording, that's a lot of that's, that's a, a lot of video. <laughs> that's a problem. The same, the same thing that you need to give to the police. One right. of them at least needs to call the police. Right. The number one thing should be calling the police and making yeah, sure this is the thing. The number at least call the police. People are not doing it. It makes sense for them to stand there for five, ten minutes and just look. That's true. That is definitely you know, true. You don't want to get in the middle and stand up, but you know, call the people. Call for help. Who exactly. Come and do, do something. But, and we see it more and more just about because the violence is really increasing. It is. I don't know what it is, but it's just it's a lot. It's Apparently on Twitter, I, I I've gotten into Twitter in the past year and a half. Um, the the drug epidemic is pretty high; it's getting higher in New York, and I'm like, okay then. So I, I'm not surprised. I just it's just so much things happening. We just have to keep safe, be vigilant, yeah. know what who's around you, know what's around you. If something looks suspicious, maybe maybe something looks suspicious to you is not really suspicious, but take yourself out of the situation. So if, if something does happen, you can call from a distance and not you and your family or yourself get hurt. Um, right. It's just, there's a lot of things. A lot of people are just on edge. I really don't know why we're on edge, but <laughs> there's a lot of reasons to be on edge. But um, yeah, you really have to you have to be careful, take care of you, and um, and then get the help, get the people that needs who are who are really trained to do the job. Right. Get them to do what they have to do. Definitely. And also make your kids be vigilant. My daughter sometimes I'm she's seven and I'm like, girl, you have to you gotta because I I wanna train a lot. So I just like you have to focus. If you have a person doing the most and they're cursing all this stuff, we need to go to the next car. We, and I, sometimes I'll be like out late at night. So I'm like, not sometimes, like once in a blue, like once or twice a month. And I say, Girl, this is late night. We cannot be doing all this. I need to hear what's around us. I gotta be vigilant. You can't be talking to I'm, I'm like, baby, I can't talk to you that much right now. We could talk in the house. Right now we just gotta be Focus on what I'm. I'm the only adult here. You can only do so much. Yeah. So I just gotta be vigilant in that. Way. Last year, for um, I think it was for our domestic violence awareness month. We had like a month long of activities, and then we had um a self defense class, self defense class, and she was really really helpful. And um, one of the 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 the, the clues that she gave was you have to be you stay focused. People now they not focused when they're outside. They, they're too distracted on the phone. Yes. And, you know, and they don't even realize, you know, the danger might be coming at them. They wouldn't realize until it's there. Wow. I watched a video probably two or three years ago. I, I feel like it was before Corona, so Not probably two. three years ago at this point. About to be in March. Outside, and especially when you're in the subway, you need to be focused. When you are with really? your children, you need to be really aware of your surroundings. You cannot just 
be walking, your head's down, and you don't see what's going on. No, you can't. You can't. There's a lot of things that we have to do um, just because we live in this, you know, violence every day, um, more than what we used to do before. That's true. More than what we used to be for, to do before. Yeah. We yes. need to bring awareness. We need to talk about things. You know, those topics that people don't want to talk to, we don't want to listen to it, but it's important right. to do that. That's one of the best way for us right now to get the work done. To be visual you know? and get yeah. out there. It's a lot. Like, there's a person on the phone and this truck was backing up, but because it's in the phone, they didn't see the truck backing up on them. And the truck hit them. And it goes, you know, it's like those construction trucks. So they didn't realize they hit a person because, you know, it's construction. Everything is bumpy, you know, and a person ended up dying. Another thing, another incident on the train, I think it happened about two weeks ago. This person kissed a little girl on the train. And they're looking for this man now because why are you kissing a, a stranger on a train in the first place? But you have to be very vigilant of what's happening around you because it's just, maybe he did it not to, like, First of all, it's weird kissing a little girl on the train. You don't know them. It's not like a, her grandpa. It looks like an older guy. Well, we know he can have wow. dementia. I don't really know. But it's like you have to really watch your kids vigilantly. Make sure they know if something happened, they're screaming bloody murder. I tell my daughter, somebody pick you up. You kick, you scream. You might not be that strong, but somebody will hear your voice at least to help you. I try to keep yeah, them. You know, kids always like to wander away. <laughs> so you have to just be very vigilant with your kids. And hey, you know when kids. we do, you're right. When we do, um, we, we do a lot of um, um, I mean we, we do it really depends but basically what we do we bring awareness when we talk about like sexual assault awareness but we talk to young girls and boy as early as eight nine years old as you should yeah because it, 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 this is crazy because for me if you have said that to me years ago I will say no they're too young Right. You don't want to bombard them with this right now. Right. But guess what's happening in school? Exactly. They're being bombarded with that already. It's six or seven. They're already exposed to this. Triggering their, you know, their, their mind on on top on, on subject that they should not be thinking about right now. But eight, nine years old should be worried about being with the doll after school and <laughs> exactly. having fun. Play they should not be worried about having fun right now. Exactly. But how many of them are funds? You know, they're so exposed. Our children are really, really exposed yeah. to a lot of bad things. That's so true. as a parent, we need to, you know, there's right now there's no appropriate age. I will have for me, I was like, oh, let's talk to, I don't know, adolescent, like you know, we're 12 years old, and like everybody looked at me. It's too late. It's too late. Too late. <laughs> too, late. <laughs> too, late. <laughs> too late. I told they're kissing already, they're doing things. I'm like, what? exactly. God forbid. Yes. So now that we do it, eight, nine years old. My daughter, so she's about nine five years old. old. I talked to her about nobody should be doing nothing inappropriate. Where's your no no areas? If no somebody needs to come close. You, yeah. Tell you me. You need to know your body and if anything happens, because statistically it's proven too, especially in the black communities. And like yeah. all these things happen with people. <laughs> It have, it's being done by people who are really close to the family. They're not exactly. strangers. It's usually not a stranger. You're definitely it's right. Not a stranger. It's somebody that you've known, a, a friend of the family or family member. It's always that friend of the family. Who's so not it doesn't family. matter if it's your older brother or your older sister. They should not be touching you in you know in your private and telling you certain exactly. things or making you watch certain things or making you touch them. It, no. It's true. But if we don't if we don't tell them, those our poor innocent children would not know. They would not know. That's so true. yeah, it, it's about time to we we have to we have to do that. We need it's our responsibility as our parents to talk to our children. Education. It is Education. we need to educate them about sexual assault, domestic violence, like all type of violence. Everything. We need to educate them about that. They need to be aware. It's really sad because it's a lot, but unfortunately, it's better for us to do it now than not to say anything to them and then they might be exposed or become a victim just because they lack the information that was necessary for them to be, to seek help or just to say no or to run away. You'd be surprised. I was talking to a young lady. We did a, a domestic violence panel 
And some of our stuff started in high school. So you'd be surprised how these girls are in relationships and guys are in relationships in high school and girls yeah. are beating on them. Like, you think it's okay. Like, you say, oh, my God, he hitting me. It's not a joke. A person should not be putting their hand on you. A person should no. be kicking you, spitting. That's not, that's inappropriate. So yeah. we need to teach our young children, very young, that these things are not what's supposed to happen. If you say no, it's not okay. okay. No. Don't hit it's me. It's not okay. It's not a game. As a young girl, like, you know, then you need to be respected. And what to respect? But see, this is a, this is the thing. The thing is that we've lost all this. I, I will say basic um, part of the education that our parents had: how to be respected and how to respect. We, we need to be respected. Nowadays, children are not even respectful when it comes to their own parents. So you think they're going to respect somebody else from outside? Exactly. So because they used to go, they think okay, it's okay for them to be for someone to talk to them a certain way, they would not feel a difference. For them, it's going to be okay for that boyfriend to, to, to do or to say things to them. It's not right. even just beating them up. It's just about talking to them. Right. I hear some conversation sometimes. I'm in the train. At the end of the day, and those young girls or boys, the way they talk, I mean, literally, first of all, I don't understand everything. Thank God I don't understand everything because I don't want to understand everything. But part of what I can understand, I'm shocked. Yeah, you know, like, and for them, that's the everyday language. It's a norm. It's a norm. That's not normal. That. That's not normal. That's not normal. They, it, 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 I, and just like you know, the 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 the, the SF, you, SU, every, everything, every five seconds, oh, SU, oh, SU, just that. Well, you don't need the F word. The S word itself, it's not proper. Exactly. Something like that, but you know, when they argue, they have to come up with the bigger, you know, the bigger word, and exactly. you know, who's going to hurt the most? Who's going to do this? It's just. But if at home the parents speak that way too, well, that's the thing too. We're not coming exactly. out of this, but it would be. You see, I speak a certain way, right? Right. So it would be complicated for my daughters to bring those slang actions. Home. Yeah, it would be really difficult. Like. Because that's that's not our language. That's not how we, we communicate. Right. And if I hear one time, I would just like, okay, no, 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 this is not <laughs> happening here. We need to reformat ourselves and then go back into the you know the, the normal language. But right. parents have to be there and you know that's that's why as a parent we 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 need to set the tones. We need to be also good examples to our children. It's true. Because many things is like children. Kids will pick up everything. It doesn't That's matter. Hundreds. If they're two years old, they will pick up even if they have a friend with a with a pacifier and they want a pacifier, they will want the pacifier. Right. Even little kids, that's what they, they do, right? They will pick up everything that is in their environment. This is you cannot go against that. That's not something that you can prevent or you can avoid from happening. Right. It will happen. But that's when you need to be the example and set the tone and say, okay, this is good and this is not good right you know that's why we need to like be as a mediator and then also just be set the rules for them to know what is right and what is wrong it's definitely true but i know that you are a busy woman and okay. you have things to go on for the day so i'm gonna let you go but thank you for thank you so much for being in the podcast thank you for giving me your perspective thank you for sharing your story thank you for having your organization out here to help other people who's going through the situation who might be so just letting us understand what's going on and make sure they're not alone in this world with yeah um, definitely and yeah. i wanted to i forgot to say that i will send you our next flyer we have two events coming next month Ooh. Uh March, like everybody knows, it's women month yes, celebration. Yes, so we are going to have one event to celebrate women where we're going to come is going to be empowerment. I know sometimes it's really difficult to find good things and positive things to say to each other, but right. we are going to train ourselves to start doing that because when we come together, we are stronger and we are better. So Definitely. we have this empower, empowering empowering event that we're gonna have in March. And then April, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, also going to have an event. Oh, so, wow. It's back to back, everyone. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. And we did also uh, this month, uh, we had um, our last event actually was Saturday, um, oh. Black History Month. 
So yeah, we just learn about like culture around our African heritage. Got it. Um, and then we focus on Central Africa. So it was really amazing. So I will send you those flyers. So please, yes, everybody's invited, but they yes. need to register first. It'll be on um, Twitter. Then, It'll be on Instagram. I'm constantly on my page and on our page posting stuff. So if you see it there, guys, come out to it. If as long as if it's on Saturday, I can bring my kids. Then it's fine. If not, it's gonna be much harder to do it. But I'll try to go out to these events and you know I'll probably vlog and on my channel and tell you what's happening and what's happening in the community out here. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. And keep doing what you're doing. It's really, really important. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you Bye. next time, guys. Bye.